Kenan, really good to get you on Real Vision. Um, really looking forward to this conversation because you and I have been talking for a while and what's come across in our conversations is, is how much this digital change is it going to affect everybody and everything. And I just thought your perspective on this whole thing is fascinating. But before we dig into it, I'd love to hear a bit about you and, and how you got into what you're doing and what you're doing now. Ralph, thank you. It's uh, it's been it's been a lot of fun. I think getting to where we are. Thank you for having me having me on on Real Vision. And um, I'll tell you, if I look back on kind of where I've come from to what I'm involved in now, I could have never driven a straight line. And then I'm going to be on Real Vision with Ralph talking about the disruptive aspects of of cryptocurrency blockchain on the industry I'm in now, which is executive search. I mean, one would say, what do those even have to do? one to the other. But it's uh, it's funny, when you look backwards, things oftentimes make sense. And as I was even kind of preparing for this, some interesting kind of touch points, which I'll touch on real quick that, uh, you know, I've been kind of looking in and around this space that you've been staring at and talking about, but not even really realizing why I was there until I kind of look back and then see that it all kind of connects the dots. But just real quick, because I don't want to make this about me and make it more about, um, you know, the topic, the topic at hand. Um, I spent most of my career as a U.S. diplomat tasked to go to weird places in the world to help solve primarily kind of national security challenges for the United States government. And, you know, part of that was, again, and maybe even to some of your past in the investment world, was looking for macro trends, trying to understand the why behind what was happening, meet people doing interesting things around the world, and put the U.S. in this case in a position of kind of strength based on that information and those relationships. Um, that took me... Started out in Nigeria for three years, moved to Paris for three years, and um, and then wrapped up my time in, in Asia Pacific based out of, of Auckland, New Zealand, kind of looking at China writ large, that part of the world. And what's really cool about the job is you were given kind of basic level requirements. The president, Uncle Sam, is interested in these things. Now go out and, and, and color in between the lines. And um, and while there's some really interesting stories all there in that are fun to talk about over a beer, one that really relates to this was in 2016, I um, found myself at an Ethereum conference in Auckland, New Zealand. And it was early days, I mean, at least as far as I was concerned. Why? why? <laughs> Good question. I, uh, I think it was Taylor Gary and Mark Pascal, who was, who is, a, is a Kiwi, and they brought this kind of motley crew of Ethereum thought leaders together in a beautiful place. And someone tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, Ken, you should really just start watching this thing. Um, this Ethereum thing is, is, is going to be important. Um, the U.S. government should be aware of it. They're not already, uh, but it's going to change. It's going to change the way we think about the world. Remember, I write this. I send it back to Washington, D.C. Somebody goes, you got to be kidding me. I'm trying to spend a thousand bucks to go spend two days with some folks talking about things. Remember, I sat there for two days. I barely understood a word being spoken. <laughs> it made my head hurt. And uh, and other than leaving it going, there's something here. I have no clue how it's going to disrupt the world. And I think the title of that, I looked back on it last night, was Blockchain Disrupting Global Commerce was the subject of this conference in 2016, right? <laughs> and here we sit five years later talking about that very thing. And I'm no longer a diplomat. I left the government, went to go work in aerospace and, and, and for a really cool company putting satellites in space. And along that journey, met a man named Steve Potter who runs Audrey's Barrens in the US, which is a, uh, a traditional executive search firm based out of the UK, uh, second biggest in the world outside of the US and, um, and sixth biggest kind of globally. So I think of it as, you know, you get kind of the big four or five in any professional consulting world, big banking, Odger sits in kind of that old stalwart, old fashioned thought leaders of placing the C-suite and finding the talent, uh, the future talent, uh, you know, for the world's leading companies. Uh, why would I end up there? Well, well, Steve said, I need someone from outside of this industry to come and join me to think about disrupting it. Uh, it's the only, as he described, a professional service in the world that hasn't really changed in 60 years. He had me at hello, super interesting to me. How can I roll up my sleeves, be an outsider and kind of an old boy, girl uh, environment and, and think about how to, how to disrupt it. And that took me on a path of thinking about people, information, data, and how we view it in order to place, identify the best talent and bring it together for our clients. And I'll stop there for a minute. So, you know, life kind of 
took me on this weird journey. Ethereum was a part of it five years ago. And, uh, and then given where we're at now, and I, I, I'm very bullish on the belief that blockchain in particular is going to play a very important role in the future of talent. And, and we're trying to position ourselves now as a, as a firm at kind of the, the leading edge of that space. There's going to be something like, but there's currently about 125 million users of crypto in whatever way you measure that. But it's growing at a face, a rate of change faster than anything else we've ever seen in any industry. By normal projections using just network effects, we get to about a billion people in five years. If you add in maybe the central bank digital currencies and Facebook DM, you might be at two or three billion people in five years. So we need to go up 20x from here in terms of how this permeates every part of our lives. So I'm thinking of you guys at the center of this, because if you think of executive search, it's when firms adapt, they need to reach out to you guys and say, help us find talent. When the world changes, they reach out to you saying, help us figure out what we should do with this, whether we need to retrain our people. And you've got people who want to go into that industry. You're basically the clearinghouse for everything that happens. So what were your clients starting to say to you that got you interested in thinking, you know what, we should think about how we can disrupt ourselves using this? Well, it's a great question. And, you know, and a lot of our traditional clients are these kind of institutional players. And oftentimes they're, they're the slowest to adapt, right? They, uh, they tend to watch and wait and, and make sure it's a sure thing before they jump in. Um, but what we've seen and found over the last, I've been with uh, Andres Bernstein now three years, or the last two years in particular, is an increase in awareness to this movement and, and a, a particularly kind of the chief innovation officer level of kind of the things that we do of going, we need to start thinking about it and solving for it. Um, and, and even kind of a lot of the business intelligence that we pick up is these anecdotal conversations we're having with executives all over the world. And, and it's, it can be a very vulnerable uh, set of conversations and time as they're thinking about the next moves. Some of these things were very much the thing that the C-suite, at least we found, it was, a, it was a knowledge gap for them. So they go, how can we get smarter and understand we're going to need to know these things? And I liken it back to, um, I remember my mother, when she was an executive, she was part of that generation that didn't really understand the internet and, and nor did they have to type, right? They all had typists, they had these things and they were all at night. Um, and she was one of them that was, was hiring people. And this was, it was almost, it was secretive because it was shameful that they were going to have to spend their, their late night hours learning how to use this equipment to stay relevant. And I think we've seen this when it comes to understanding, um, I'll say blockchain writ large, how it could impact their industries, um, how they should be thinking about building teams around it. And then the other thing we started to watch, and this goes back to maybe some of my, my government days is, is indicators in the market, right? The government and everybody talks about the regulatory constraints of all this and what it's going to be is you started to see, actually, it seemed kind of the government clearing the way to not impede this movement. And I think this administration's done some neat things with chief innovation officer of the FDIC and, uh, and others, it's just kind of what their backgrounds are. So we're hearing this kind of quiet chatter around the space on the commercial side. We're hearing it and seeing, I think, on the government side and going, someone's going to be first to the space in our industry. And then Wayne Gretzky said, you know, kind of go to where you think the puck's, puck's going to be. We just started to go, we're going to, we're insane. If we're not, we're not going to ever be experts on blockchain as application, but we need to be as very smart on where the talent is, where it could be and where it might be that doesn't realize that it's got the skills to kind of cross pollinate and into, into, into this sector. Um, and that's, 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 I think where we're at. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to like and subscribe for more crypto related content. Also, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com slash crypto.